Hi, if you're struggling to get your child into school right now and you're really worried, this is the video for you. My name's Sarah Jane Critchley. I'm the author of A Different Joy, The Parent's Guide to Living Better with Autism, Dyslexia, ADHD and more. And I'm very aware that at this time of year, this is when issues start to come out and start to arise for our children who are really anxious and who are really struggling. And I'm aware that lots of you are talking about that on Facebook and Twitter and other places. So I wanted to produce this film for you today so to try and help you a bit with the issues that you're kind of struggling with. And the first thing to bear in mind is that if, if one of your kids just doesn't want to go to school, can't bear to go to school, often it's not that they're being naughty, it's that they are absolutely scared, terrified and just can't bear the thought of going in. And I love this little picture, I feel so sorry for this little mite. But it's not just the children who really, really struggle with this. And I know that from my own experience, it's really tough. And when, if you have a child who won't go in, who's really miserable, who's really unhappy, you sit there and it's, it's soul destroying. You know, you think, what have I done wrong? Why, why can't my child be the one who's skipping in through the playground, having a lovely time? Well, sometimes it's because they're not being supported in the way that they need to be supported in order to make them feel safe. So it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's that maybe the support needs to be put in place to help them to be able to cope with that better. And the most important thing is for them to be safe. So if you have to choose between their academic performance or their safety, their security and their mental health, I would choose their safety, security and mental health every single time without a shadow of a doubt. Now I know professionals have a different view and if you look at their priorities, they may be seeing different things. But for me as a parent, I know I want my children to be safe first. It matters not a jot what results they got in SATs or A-levels or degrees or whatever if I can't keep them alive long enough to enjoy a long and happy life. That's far more important. But oh my word, do we really need some help to get there? So sometimes you're going to have to ask for help. But how do you know when it's just on those little things that happens? Because most children don't want to go to school. Particularly after the summer holiday, getting back into the swing of it is really difficult and lots of kids don't want to do that, especially if it's a new place, if they haven't made friends, if something's happened over the summer, you know, all sorts of reasons could make it very difficult for them. So when should you start to worry about their unhappiness and their lack of wanting to get in? Well, I was thinking about that. So. Um, what I put together was an emotional distress detective toolkit because you have to kind of get underneath what's causing their unhappiness and if it's just for two or three days you wouldn't worry but if it starts to go on for more than two weeks if it goes into three weeks or four weeks or more then you know you have an issue that needs help and support so I've developed this um, a toolkit for you um, I'll show you this is a month long assessment process and the idea, I'll show you this one because it's easier for you to see. Um, the idea behind it is that you would pick whatever sort of emotional output your young person has when they're really unhappy. Some people get um, aggressive and violent. Other people get really silent and shut down. Others will um, have emotional outbursts. Others will cry. You know, it can be whatever you need it to be. Whatever your young person does, whatever affects them most. That is the, the area that you focus on. And then you talk through with them what it feels like to them when they're really happy and safe and secure. And then you record a description of what that's like in there. You just type that in. This is an Excel spreadsheet and I'll put the link below. You just type in what that looks to them. And then do the middle one, which is when I kind of feel, it's all right, everything's all right. What does that feel like? How would I describe that? What does that feel like to that young person? So they may say, when I'm really, really happy, I feel like I'm surrounded by a soft juve. Well, you might want to put soft juve there. If they say, well, when things are okay, I'm kind of, it's okay, it's kind of like eating something I like. Um, and when it's a 10, when they're really unhappy, really distressed, really frustrated, then you may see them banging their heads, you may see them kicking, you may see them um, hitting their heads or biting themselves or 
slapping other people, you know, that would be a 10. Um, or you may see that they're totally shut down. You may see that they're unable to talk anymore, that they don't want to come out of their rooms, you know, but you'll know for your young person what that looks like and put in as many indicators as you can that are appropriate and ideally work with them so that you know what that indicator is for them. It's really important that it's tailored to them, not to anybody else, okay? And then you would just put in here, each one of these is a day, and then you would put in the day, the date, the time when you notice the behavior or the feeling, and then the trigger, if there is one, and then you would put in a number from one to 10. And when you put in a 10, it comes up red. When you put in a one, it comes up green, but put in ones at the bottom and tens at the top. And what that does, if you can see the different colors here, is it allows you to see what the pattern is, what the pattern of reaction, what the pattern of emotion is. Because if this sort of unhappiness goes on for a very long time, you are going to want to do something. And you need to be able to identify when the flashpoints are, when the issues are, what the trigger is for that unhappiness in order to be able to work it out. So if, for example, like this young man, this is Fred Bloggs, by the way, I made up Fred Bloggs, so don't worry about poor Fred. He might be the, the poor screaming child in the beginning. So poor Fred Bloggs here is absolutely miserable at 8.30 a.m. on a Monday, on Monday the um, 3rd of September, and so he got a 10. I couldn't get him into the car, couldn't get him into the taxi, he was lying on the floor, he was screaming, he was banging his head. He was really unhappy on the 3rd of September because he was going into a new class, he didn't know anybody, he didn't know where he was going to be. Okay, It was unfamiliar and he hadn't met his teacher. So that, in his case, meant that he was a 10. And then when you look at the pattern, you think, oh, well that was a good day, what happened there? And what you've, we've done there is we've recorded on, oh look, it's a Saturday, it's the 9th of September and it's at 2 p.m., it's in the afternoon. And that happened to be when he went swimming, maybe, because that's what he loves to do. Um, and he was really, really happy then. But look what happened on Sunday, that was Sunday at 8 p.m. when I asked him to go and put his shoes on and get his clothes ready for the following day so that he'd be ready for school. He suddenly remembered that school was happening. He remembered that school has been a bit stressful for him on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then again on Friday when he's absolutely exhausted, and he starts to get really anxious about it, and now he's at a nine. So then he starts again on Monday. Oh look, Monday the 10th at 8 a.m. He's supposed to have a taxi come to pick him up. The taxi driver's got somebody brand new, and there are roadworks and now he's kicking off and it's really difficult for him. Look, it's a nine. So by recording what's actually happening in a very visual way, you then have evidence and a discussion point to be able to take to the people who can support your child. So if you find that you're having quite severe problems but it's only for two or three days, then that's usually a very transitory thing and it may be dealt with by um, staff helping them more appropriately or by you understanding what the issue is and then working out a better way of dealing with it. Both help, both help, no end. But if it goes on and on and on, you need to look for these patterns, you need to look to find out what is causing the issue and then you can start to unpick how to solve it, okay? So what do you do when you found that there's an issue? So I've suggested that you do it for a month because that will give you quite good information. If you're looking for an education, health and care plan, then some form of long sustained monitoring that's more than a few days is actually really, really helpful. One of the best things that we ever did for getting an education, health and care plan for my daughter was to monitor her migraines, which is a physical symptom she has. But we did that over months. So she kept a migraine diary and she had to do that regularly to show what the pattern of those migraines were and how severely she was affected. Without this sort of thing, without this sort of monitoring, there is a risk that the people that you're working with will not understand the severity of the issues that you're facing. So it's really, really helpful. I know it's self-reporting and you're actually, either the young person can record it for themselves, if, if they like that sort of thing, if they're able to do that, or you can record it for them. It is self-reporting, but even so, it's a very helpful um, tool to use. So I'll put a link down below in the description. All you need to do is just, if you just send me your email address, I will 
and sign up for it, I'll send that to you and it won't cost you anything. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It'll be hopefully helpful. So what do you do next when you've got your data? When you've got your thought, you go in to your teacher or your senka and say, this is what's happening. I've noticed that every Monday, Fred Blogs is really unhappy. Um, we need to do something to help support him. What can we do? At which point, hopefully, the teacher or senko, who will be incredibly well trained, you have, need to ask them what training they've had. If they've had the Autism Education Trust training, that's a really good thing. Um, then that will be, hopefully they will have some ideas of things that they could do and if they don't, you can help them find them. What we're talking about here is putting in place scaffolding, putting in place structure that will help your young person to flourish because what they need is they just need the structure to enable them to flow into their day with a minimum of stress and unhappiness. When that structure is in place and is appropriate, then people can do amazing things. But without it, the anxiety and the stress and the pain and the misery can be huge. So it's really important to think about how that might work. One of the really good places you can look for structure is a thing called Tools for Teachers. And this is just, it works like magic. The scaffolding works like magic. Um, you can buy a copy from the Autism Education Trust website. I'll put a link to that as well down below. Um, it costs 29 99 but there are some really, really good tools on it. It was written for teachers, but the tools that are in here will help you as parents as well. They are really seriously good. Um, and there's tools for all sorts of things, all sorts of things in here. So I recommend you go and have a little look. Um, and if not, the school should have a copy, it's worth them having a copy and I would recommend that they have a look there. That will give them tools that will really help them to settle your young person down and enable them to cope better. The sort of things that you would be looking for um, would also be included in the Autism Education Trust Autism Standards and I've got a copy I've printed out here, here's one I prepared earlier for you. And if you look at the standards I'll just turn on to this one, which is around curriculum and learning. There are four different areas, um, but the one I'm going to talk to you about today is around how to help your young person learn. Um, and it just shows you here. Standard number two says, and I quote, Your setting provides individualised visual supports to ensure that the sequence of activities during the day is understandable and predictable. The Flashpoint times in the day are usually the beginning of the day, when your young person doesn't know what's going to happen next, where people are milling around in the changing rooms, in the cloakrooms. Um, lunch times, which are unstructured and often don't have um, an easy way for them to be able to cope, and that's a time when lots of bullying happens as well, so it's really useful that there's appropriate structure in place there. And at the end of the day as well. So all of those unstructured times make life harder. If there isn't appropriate structure on how to get from one lesson to another or from one activity to another, that makes it much harder for a young person. If there's a lot of um, talking activities but they're not structured in a way that the young person can participate, then that makes it much harder. So the more structure you put in place, the easier it is. Okay. And finally, after putting all that in place, what else can you do that makes a difference? If, all, if you've tried everything and none of that's working, or even if it is and you're having a good day one day and a bad day another, it's really important you just take a bit of time to take the pressure off your young person. They're working really hard during the day to try and cope with things that are unpredictable, unknown, and sometimes very, very scary. So please, please, please give them time to just go and play, and go and play with them. It'll do you the world of good as well. Ideally get outside, ideally go down to the park and play, take the dog for a walk. If you've got a cat and you like cats, by all means pet them. Probably won't work the same with a goldfish, but you know if goldfish are your thing, by all means go for it, but make sure the goldfish is safe. Don't hike it out the water, that won't be good for it. Just do whatever takes the pressure off and play. Because when it comes down to it, this is going to be a really hard time for you and getting someone to cope is really difficult. But put the structure in place and then you stand a much better chance. And if it doesn't work, 
if you've tried everything and it doesn't work use something like this as part of your evidence and then you have a much better case when you're looking at getting additional support whatever that may be i really hope that's helped you please sign up for the um for the in emotional distress detective toolkit and i hope that's helped you look forward to speaking to you soon take care bye